It seems that no matter how large our sewing field is, at some point we'll want to sew something that exceeds it. Keep in mind that while Hatch can split up even very large and complex designs in just a few easy steps, you still have to hoop it and stitch it. Therefore, you should consider how hard it will be to get precise alignments when stitching. Let's walk through multi-hooping a design from the Hatch Included Design Library. I'm in the Design Library, and I'm in the Hatch Embroidery folder. These are the included designs, and I've done a quick search for butterfly. I'm going to select this butterfly and click New from Selected. New from Selected will open this design into a new blank design. That way, I don't disturb my original. Now I'm going to save this, and I'm just going to call it Purple Butterfly, and I'm going to add underscore MH. And what that tells me is this is set up for multi-hooping. I often append little initials like that onto my design so I know what they are before I open them. Now let's imagine that I only have a 4x4 four four hoop. And that's the 100 millimeter hoop. So I have my machine selected, it's single needle, and I'll go up here and I'll choose 100 by 100. And we can see that this design does not fit in this hoop. So I'm going to need to multi-hoop it if I want to sew it at this size. In fact, if I do Control A to select all, we can see that it's 180.8 millimeters. So it's just a teensy bit too big to sew in my 5 by 7 hoop, which is a 180 by 130 hoop. I could shrink it a teeny bit and I'd have no problems, but you would not want to shrink this design to fit this hoop. These satin stitches in here would just get too short. Things would get too small. So Hatch will let you shrink it that much, but remember, it's what sews on your machine that is the ultimate controlling factor. So I'll go to the multi-hooping toolbox. And now we can see that it's applied one hoop. And anything shown here in green can be sewn in this one hoop. Anything in black is too large to sew in this hoop. So if I click multi-hooping options, let's just see what that does. We do want to add registration marks. And we have an option for margin. And margin is how far those registration marks are placed from the perimeter of your sewing field. When it's set to small, it's as close as possible to the perimeter. And this gives the best overall registration. These are the default settings. I'm good with those. I'll click OK. And now I'll click Automatically Add Hoops. Hatch has figured out all the hoopings. And it says the current layout of hoop positions will result in four hoopings. You want to pay attention to this. All objects in the design are covered by hoops. And I'll click OK. Now it said four hoopings, but we only see three here. We have a red one, a green one, and a blue one. So one of them is repeated. We don't need to do splitting line. And I'll click Preview Hooping. Notice that a new docker has opened. So here we see our hooping sequence. If I click and hold on hoop number one, I can see what's included there. I'll click and hold on hoop number two. Hoop number three is in the same placement as hooping number one. Notice that the hoop outline is the same color. And then the last hooping. I can rearrange the hoops in here if I want to. I'm good with this, so I'll click Calculate Hoopings. And we get the same message again. So at this point, although the hoopings have been calculated, nothing has yet been saved. In other words, it's just like we're designing. So we've done the design part, and now we need to do the save for the EMB design and to export the hoopings. So I'm going to press Control S on my keyboard to save my design. And now I need to go to the Output Design Toolbox. And I'll click Export Design, just like you would do for any embroidery design when you're ready to sew it. It asks me where I want to save it. I'm going to use the same name and check your format to make sure it's the right format. And I'll click Save. And right now, it's building all of those hoopings. Now, it hasn't actually saved our hoopings at this point. You can check our hoopings again. And if everything's good, I'll click Save All Now. And all our hoopings were saved. So I'll click Close. So now that we've created our designs, we might want to have worksheets for each hooping. We can do that by going to Print Preview. You can find that here on the toolbar or here in the Output Design Toolbox. I have some settings turned on so I can see the hoopings. 
I'll go to the next page, and you can see here I have individual hoopings. So let's see what we need to turn on. I'll click on Options, and I have Hooping Sequence checked and Print as Thumbnails unchecked, and I have Hoop selected here. These Zoom settings down here apply to the master design, your EMB design. They don't affect your hoopings. So I'm going to select Zoom to Fit, and I'll click OK, and we can see each one of our hoopings. I'll go to the next page. So you can print these, and you have color sequences for each hooping. And I'll go back to my first page, and here I have sort of my master plan. And I can see where the hoopings are. So at this point, you can click Print Now, and it will print to your default printer. Or you can click Close, because we've configured all these settings, save your design, and then go to Print Design here or up here, and print whenever you're ready. So yes, we do have a few steps to create a multi-hooping design, but they're not hard. Now, I recommend that before you take on a really large, stitch-intensive project, that you just start with a simple one. In fact, just work through this one so you see the process. Hatch makes the splitting up of the design easy, but remember, you still have to stitch it, and that requires precise hooping. There is a project in the Hatch Academy that does a multi-hooping lesson from start to finish. We digitize the design, we multi-hoop the design in Hatch, and then we actually stitch it out from start to finish. So if you want to learn more, check out that project.